Working with Jackie Chan for the first time was on the film City Hunter. Um, a phenomenal experience, no less confusing, I might add, because the same thing existed where, you know, they're pretty much winging it as they go. But, you know, you're working with a maestro of martial art action movies, there's no question. And to get invited to do that was a big thrill for me. Uh, and it really was. And we ended up, we're in Tokyo, and we did all the exterior shots on this cruise liner that, uh, you know, sailed all around Tokyo Harbor. We did, and then the interiors were done back on sets in, uh, in Kowloon. And uh, to work with Jackie and see really our panel, of course, you know, having worked on Twinkle Twinkle, I knew his level of excellence and the excellence he demanded of anyone around him. I mean, little fights I did, even that was an experience. But to work with him on City Hunter and do a fight that took six weeks to shoot, uh, I, I really appreciated why his fights look as phenomenal as they do, because he will not accept anything less than perfection as far as perfection can be achieved with the choreography with the amount of takes it'll take to get a shot i mean three or four moves as i said may take two days three days to shoot if he feels that's how long it's going to take to make it right and and to see firsthand his athletic prowess the creativity in the choreography I mean, it's, it's, it's an eye-opener. It's something you'll never see in the States because, as you know, even on big movies, to shoot a fight scene, admittedly it was a long fight, nearly six minutes long, but they'd still only shoot that in a matter of days. I mean, this was six weeks because he knows that's what his audience want to see. So it, it was a treat, but difficult. I mean, to say it was fun during the shoot, you know, I'd be lying because it's just hard, hard work because you're doing their choreography with their time, with their techniques, and you're doing it so many times and you're working 18 hour days and often seven days a week. I mean, that's tough, very demanding. But I tell you the other thing, when I got back to America after those shoots, like a cakewalk, you know, compared to that, the way it sets you up, I mean, you just know what work is. But again, I want to emphasize to work with, with um, someone like Jackie Chan on, on that sort of a movie. Yeah, again, you're working with the maestro of martial art action movies and uh, just an absolute thrill. My character in City Hunter was the first time I actually got to play a character with Jackie where I have a name and a character and, and a through line all the way through and his name was Colonel Donald Mack. And basically, I'm like a terrorist, you know, it's almost like die hard on a ship where myself and my boys infiltrate, get on board the ship, take over and uh, end up sort of knocking a few people off, as it were, and having a bit of fun. And Jackie uh, ends up sort of taking us all out. But a uh, fun character. Again, my hair's slicked back, you know, I'm in a dinner suit. I'm a bit of a card sharp, funny scene where I get all the people on board. I ask them who can play cards, you know, and have, there's a scene where I'm playing cards and they've got this whole line of like 20, 30, 40 people waiting to play, but as they lose, I say, oh, sorry, pull out a gun and shoot them, which I thought was, again, very typical of the humor in those sorts of movies and very funny. But uh, again, it was fun, fun to be a character, fun to be one of the main characters, and of course to have as a character through line through the whole movie. you find when you do a Hong Kong movie is they literally have no script. They write the script day by day as they go, which means as an actor, I have no idea what I'm going to do tomorrow or the next day or whatever, and they don't even know, which again makes it very spontaneous. Uh, in some ways for an actor, it's kind of okay because I go on, I've got no stress of learning lines and trying to learn paragraphs of pages. Of course, I do have to learn them on the spot then. And pretty much they'll just do it over and over until you get it right. A lot of times you'll just imitate what the director wants, whether it's Jackie or Sam, or the, to the point of imitating facial expressions. Because they've got a very clear picture about what they want and what works for them in their movies. And, and that's the other thing going back to fighting too, is that you're really not there to give input on a fight. It's about what they want because again, they're the best at what they do with Hong Kong style action, which has been proven with today's movies. So you're really there to do what you're told. And Kurata, Shoji Kurata was a pretty famous Japanese actor that did 40 plus Hong Kong movies. He was the first one to tell me that if you want to work here, mm, don't say anything, do whatever it is they want you to do as many times as it takes. And that would often be a minimum of 30 takes per setup, which is very exhausting. But when they choreograph it, they figure if you do it long enough, you'll eventually get it. 
And, and it's their way. And if you go there, you've got to realize you're on their set and they do it best. They absolutely do it best. They're the most creative in a way of humor, in a way of wire gags, in a way of doing stuff that you would never normally do, which is why it's so much fun to do a movie with Jackie Chan. Because at the time you might be going, oh, am I really going to do this? But you know when you see the end result, you're going to be Richard Norton doing stuff that you would never ever see yourself doing in any sort of Western movie. And I think that's a lot of fun. Wong Jing was directing, I would say, the drama, and Jackie was directing the action. Wong Jing, uh, of course, he's, he's a very humorous guy. He's into comedy and everything else. Very, very creative and still to this day. In fact, you know, working on City Hunter came as a result, of course, you know, Jackie knowing my work and, of course, Wong Jing knowing my work after Magic Crystal, which is the film that he directed. My funny uh, recollection of Wong Jing, again, and the style of Hong Kong movies is being in the makeup every day and having this guy lying on one of those banana lounges you know like you'd lay out in the sun by the swimming pool in the corner of the makeup lounge he's Wong Jing cracking up because he's writing that day's script and the funny gags that he wants to shoot and then he'd give them to somebody and they'd take them on the set he often wouldn't even go on the set and somebody else would just shoot them and I thought that was hilarious I thought that was just so typical of Hong Kong movie making but that's the way they would do it just scene by scene by scene as they saw fit and make it all work. Again, when it got down to the action, of course, that, you know, which again is very much Hong Kong style, it's got to be more of the style in the States now, but you always have two directors. You'll have an action director and you will have a dramatic director. So Wong Jing was there for the dialogue, the humor and all of that sort of stuff. He would leave whenever the action started and Jackie and his stunt boys would take over and that's the way it worked. I've had the first hand experience because I've got to do a number of fight scenes with Jackie now and he's just, he's nothing short of phenomenal. The thing that sets people like Jackie and again Sam Hong and people like that aside is that they're versed in just about every form of martial art. I, I can't think of a fight that they're not able to put together. And so with Jackie, you know, and his speed, his agility, the fact that he is such an incredible acrobat along with the training he's had in different, you know, Chinese martial arts makes him a phenomenal practitioner. And I think that's obvious with his film, you know. It, you know, the one thing that Jackie demands is timing, which is something that, that he has, you know, second to none. So to be able to do fights with Jackie, it's all about timing, you know. It's not about being a good kick, a good puncher. He won't use you unless you have the timing that will work for him and with him and with his type of choreography. And so you put all those things together, you put his incredible physical condition his acrobatics, you know, the, the way he moves, you know, with his martial arts and the traditional martial arts all mixed in, it just makes up one explosive package. In America, meaning if I was going to do a fight scene, I'd pretty much choreograph the fight from start to end. You do a master shot, you know, a wide shot, so the editors know what's going on, everybody what's, knows what's going on, then you go and do your coverage but it doesn't happen in Hong Kong. They don't know what they're gonna do after the first, say, three moves. So it's done purely as you go. So if I'm doing a fight scene with Jackie, for instance, I have no idea how long it's gonna be and which direction, which direction it's gonna go. And that's one of the big differences, which is kind of interesting because in some ways it makes them very spontaneous. Because they, they put the emphasis on a fight. If you're doing an action movie, they may spend weeks doing a fight like City Hunter, you know, six weeks it took me to do the fight with Jackie. They'll go in and watch the dailies and they'll decide whether the fight needs more action, needs to be longer, needs to be shorter, or if some particular technique was no good, and they'll go and shoot accordingly. But it also means that they're open to take the fight in whichever direction they want to go, make it more violent, make it more humorous or whatever, without being locked into that so-called master shot, which is pretty interesting. And the other big difference, of course, is contact. Um, depending on the movie in Hong Kong, there is a lot of physical contact. I mean, they want to see bodies fold, uh, and you've got to be in good shape to be able to take that. It's not for wimps, that's for sure. Whereas in America, you know, it's all about the illusion of camera. You know, if you're going to be hitting me in the body, it'll be stopped just on my body, and I'll react, let some air out in with the right sound effect in. You'll never know that I wasn't hit. 
Hong Kong, they want you to be actually hit, so it's almost like a, a real sort of reaction. The Jackie Chan stunt team is very important, the Jackie Chan style of, of fight. Um, he is still a leader though, I mean they will still all wait for Jackie to come up with the ideas and of course they will be there to add input and to tweak it a little bit. And more importantly, they're the ones that will rehearse it with the actors, they're the ones that will kind of refine it a lot, you know, rehearse it for camera. And let's say for someone like me, you know, he will work out what he wants, they're the ones that will teach it to me, I'll work with them to get it down pat. And every time you see background to the major fight, it's going to be his stunt people. And the reason for that is that he knows them back to front, they know him back to front, they know his timing, he trusts them, which is very important. Because the problem with getting some, say, kickboxer out of America is he doesn't want to be smacked in the nose and have his nose broken because somebody's there trying to show how tough they are, you know? Which is again why they're very selective about who they will use, you know? And uh, you know, he knew I had very good control and everything else and would look after him in fight scenes and obviously I was expecting the same back. But his stunt, they're the support unit. You know, they're the ones that always fill in the background, do the stunts and especially whenever there's doubles, they're the ones that'll double and do the fight with him for the reasons of uh, knowing each other so well. And of course, they're trained by Jackie. The scene where I lose the dinner jacket and reveal the sticks and end up in my shirt, it was fun. And I remember when Jackie first showed me what he wanted, I thought, oh my goodness, you know, that's kind of a difficult move. But, you know, I appreciated it. He said, look, I, I really want you to look good, which, you know, which was great. Like he had that concern that for me as Richard Norton in his film, he wanted me to look good, let alone for the movie itself. And so that alone gave me the sort of zeal to really work hard on, you know, rehearsing that bit of action. But a lot of it's technique, you know. If I was to look at that and work out how to do it, watching the film would be difficult. But of course, that's what they do best, you know. They'll show you how to do it. They'll let you rehearse it as many times as it will take and shoot it as many times as it takes to get it right and away you go. You know, of course, what the audience sees looks like it was done in one take, but far from the truth. Using double sticks in City Hunter was, uh, was an experience. Now, I, you know, I have had some training in, in Eskrima and uh, Anis, but the whole idea of that character was not to be technically amazing. Um, they gave me the double sticks, and if you see some of the scenes, even I still crack up laughing because I look like the mad professor. The scenes where I'm just hitting him probably hundreds of times with these sticks. So it was meant to be, again, a lot of fun, a little cartoonish as opposed to being very strict, like martial art form, you know, if that makes sense. But, I mean, that fight, as I said, I still look at that and I think the amount of time it took to, to shoot and how funny it is and, and the amount of work that went into it was good. You know, and you also notice, by the way, that, you know, some of it, there's doubles being used in the fight. That also is very much Hong Kong style and, in fact, a lot of that's due to the fact that local stunt guys, that's how they really make money is when they double one of us Western actors, one of us Guaylos. It's not, and I'm not defending, you know, having had a double, you know, it's really, that's the reason they use them, which was fine with me. You know, just about any Western actor, or even Hong Kong actor will still have doubles at some stage. And that's a reason for that. But why I bring that up was funny, when I first had my double walk out, I had quite blonde hair, of course, and he's got his black hair, being Chinese, with a little bit of silver paint sprayed in the back. Okay, okay, he's ready. I'm like, wait a minute. But you know what, with the fast cutting and everything else, it, it's often hard to notice. I really liked City Hunter. Now I know, as far as Jackie Chan, like diehards, they some were a little disappointed because they felt it wasn't like a normal Jackie Chan movie. But I think the whole idea was to make it even appeal to a younger age than he would normally appeal to. The type of humor and the way it was set up was not as hardcore as a lot of his other movies because, you know, as we know, it was based on a Japanese comic book character. Um, a lot of that direction, of course, was decided by Wong Jing. Um, and a lot of people, again, thought, well, it wasn't like whatever that means, a normal Jackie Chan movie, but I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was so tongue-in-cheek and so different 
that I was on the floor and I took a couple of friends of mine in the film biz, you know, that never really seen a Hong Kong movie and they just thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. So yeah, I, I loved it. I just thought it was great.